Okay, so let's start right now. So let's first briefly recall that from last course, we have the following expression of the zeta integral associated to an induced representation. Z s f phi uh, can be written as an integration k cross k cross m cross n of f of k minus one g one u g two k tilde, and here is f tilde k and the tau g one g two act on f k tilde, and the pairing is for the representation tau here. And here is determinant g1 of s plus m1, m1 minus 1 over 2. And here, here is determinant of g2 s plus m2 minus 1 over 2. G1, dg1, dg2, du, dk, dk tilde. Then we want to show that if the functional equation holds uh, for, for tau, then it holds for any sub-representations sub pi of the induced representation. Uh, to do so, let's see the left-hand side of the zeta integral uh, associated to the functional, uh, associated to the function for a transform of f and a phi check. Then here we just replace f by, for a transform of f, and we, we replace uh, f tilde by f and f by f tilde. Then whenever the real part of s is sufficiently small, we can write the zeta integral of the following form. Uh, let me write here. K cross k cross m cross n. And here's the Fourier transform, Fourier transform of f, and here's k tilde inverse g1 u g2 okay and here's f of k tilde tau tilde g1 g2 f tilde k Okay, so this is the left-hand side of the zeta integral associated to the matrix coefficient phi check and uh, for a transform of f. Here, secretly, we change k tilde to k, and the reason will be seen in the following uh, in the following computations. So first, we notice that the following matrix coefficient of tau, which we write c of g1, g2, which is f tilde k, and the tau of g1, g2, and f k tilde, take pairing on tau, which is exactly the matrix coefficient appearing here. Uh, if we take the inverse, to see check of g1, g2, then by definition, this is f tilde k, and here's tau, uh, tau inverse, also tau g1 inverse, g2 inverse, and f k tilde. Take pairing on tau. Then you move the variable to the left-hand side. You get the matrix coefficient for uh, tau tilde, which is f k tilde, tau tilde of g1, g2, f tilde k, tau tilde. Uh, here should be tau tilde, yeah. Then you find that the um, C check of G1, G2 is exactly the matrix coefficient appearing here. Okay. Uh, let me see. Yes. This term is exactly the matrix coefficient appearing here. They are equal to each other. On the other hand, you find that if you uh, we let k1, uh, k inverse of f and k tilde to be the left translation by k, k inverse and right, right translation by k tilde, this new function. Then if you first apply the Fourier transform to this function, 
granted the parabolic descent, you can easily show that it's equal to, you apply the Fourier transform to this new function. Yeah. Then, in particular, we automatically find that it follows that the The function, if the functional equation holds for sigma one tends to sigma two, then it automatically holds for pi. Yeah, you just write down the explicit expression and uh, find the relation between the matrix coefficient of the two expressions and uh, the Fourier transform of these two new functions. Then you immediately deduce that the functional equation can be deduced can be deduced from the cuspidal data there. Okay. Moreover, I would like to make a remark. For any sub-representation, pi of the induced representation, they share the same gamma factor. which is just the product of the two gamma factors on the Levy factors. Yeah, this fact is very important. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the theory of Bernstein Center of a PID reductive group, it means that the gamma factor actually is a rational function on the Bernstein variety of G. So let me make the remark here. This is closely related to the Fourier transform kernel distribution that we will introduce in the Brahman custom proposal. Okay, then we have seen that. Uh huh. It is the Bernstein variety of G. Okay, uh, let me write down the definition here. So, you want to see the Bernstein center earlier? Okay. So here, let me briefly remind you, suppose you have a piada reductive group G, then we have the center, the Bernstein center for G, which consists of all the conjugation invariant. And essentially, compactly supported distributions. On G. Here, the word essentially compact supported distributions means that if you have a distribution phi, which lies in the center, it means that if you take the convolution of phi with any cc infinity function on G, then it's still a cc infinity function. A basic example is, is that like the delta distribution uh, example. Delta distribution, yeah, yeah, delta distribution, yes. Um, let me see. Then it's proved by Bernstein that if you apply the Planchard transform to this distribution, Then actually, it gives you an isomorphism between the center and the regular functions. Uh 
on the Bernstein variety that we have just said. And here, let me briefly remind you that what is the, what is the Bernstein variety here? So it is the countable disjoint union of finite dimensional complex algebraic varieties. So it is a disjoint union of the following copies. So you have a Levy subgroup of G and a sigma is a supercuspidal representation of M if the, if the corresponding copy is, is, uh, is not GL1. It's, if it's GL1, then it's just a quasi character. Okay. And the set M sigma G is the G uh, conjugation equivalence class. Let me write here. It's a equivalence class of the pairs M sigma up to G conjugation. Okay. Say it again. Um, I will say that later, yeah. And then, Um, yeah, here sigma is a supercuspidal representation of M. And in particular, if it's GL1 copy, it's just a quasi-character, as we just mentioned. Then where, where, where are the algebraic variety structures? So the following set, uh, M, and you do a ramified twist for the supercuspidal representation. Here, chi is the unramified character of M. Your psi M is the set of unramified characters. Um, okay, so you have the uh, you have the set here. Then this is a connected, it's a connected component. In, uh, in omega g. And you can show that uh, the unified character of M quotient the stabilizer of sigma under the g action has a, have a, uh, has a subjective map to this component with finite fiber. So in particular, for each connected component, you deduce that the connected component has an algebraic variety structure. Then this is just a Bernstein variety, it has a countable union of algebraic variety structure. Yeah, it's a countable union, yeah. So this is a theorem proved by Bernstein that you, you can show that any essentially completely supported distribution is conjugation invariant. After you apply the Pronton transform, then you get isomorphism with a set of regular functions on, on, the, on the Bernstein variety. And in particular, we find that the gamma function, what about the gamma function? Gamma function, unfortunately, is not a regular function. Instead, it's a rational function. Gamma factor is a rational function. Mm, on, on the catch. And uh, later, I, I will show you that if you apply the inversion back, then actually you get a, you get a Psi distribution, the Fourier transform distribution. And this plays the main role in the bavelman kashnan proposal. So any other questions?
Okay. If no question, then as we have just seen that we have already reduced the problem to the supercuspidal case and the GL1 case. Uh, the GL1 case falls from the work of uh, Tate and Iwasawa. Then what about the supercuspidal case? Then let's see the main theorem for the supercuspidal representations. First, let's see the absolute convergence. Uh, here, let me briefly remind you that the matrix coefficient for a supercuspidal representation is always compatibly supported modular the center. Uh, for convenience, we can assume the central character of pi is trivial. Then if you run the zeta integral procedure for a test function f and the matrix coefficient phi, then you find that it's always bounded by some constant times mn and fy, absolute value, and the phi y. Uh, there are no phi y anymore. It's terminal g of s plus n minus one over two dg. And then here, let me briefly remind you that the, hard me uh, the relation between the hard measure on Mn and the hard measure on G has the following uh, relation. So dg plus is equal to dg over determinant g to the nth power. Here dg plus is the hard measure on Mn and the dg is the hard measure on G. Uh-huh. No. Uh ah oh yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh then in particular the zeta integral here can be bounded by some C times M N of Fy or Fg of determinant g of s plus n minus one over two minus n of dg plus. Here also we use the fact that g embeds into mn as open dense sub variety. Then in particular, if the real pi is sufficiently large, then it converges absolutely. Um, then let's see the GCD property. Uh, in the original work of Goldman and Jacquet, they used some uh, clever use of some uh, particular uh, subspace of the space of compatibly supported functions on G. Um, I will not follow that strategy. I will use another method that I learned from a book of Bushner and here. So our goal is to show the L function of a supercuspid representation is equal to one. Okay, so let me here, uh, here let me briefly remind you that uh, by the type theory of Bushnell and Kuzco, uh, uh, 
uh, there always exists some non-zero matrix coefficient, which we denoted, which we denoted by phi naught pi, such that uh, you can find some idempotent E pi is an idempotent Uh, we support in uh, K, which is just a standard maximum open compact, such that the function phi naught pi is stable under convolution by E pi check. Moreover, Um, if you do the convolution of the idempotent with our, our Schwarz functions, then actually you just get the CC infinity function on our, our group G. Then let's see. Um, then let's run the zeta integral procedure, z s f pi. Here we notice that uh, c pi, the space of matrix coefficient, is isomorphic to v check tensor v. As a representation of g cross g is irreducible. Uh, therefore, if we want to show the properties of the zeta integral for any matrix coefficient phi, actually we only need to show the property for the particular matrix coefficient phi naught pi here. So. Okay. Mm. Then here we notice that, uh, as we just mentioned here, we can find some idempotent such that E pi check convoluted with phi naught pi convoluted with E pi check is equal to phi naught pi. So in particular, the zeta integral here is equal to Z of S, F, and the E pi check convoluted with phi naught pi and uh, convoluted with E pi check. Then I want to claim that uh, I want to claim that the Z S F E pi check convolute with phi naught pi and uh, is equal to Z S E pi convolute with F convolute with E pi and phi naught pi. If we have uh, if we have this claim, then we find that when we run the zeta integral procedure, we do not need the whole test of whole space of test functions. We only need the CC infinity functions on G. Then the zeta integral is always absolutely convergent. So we have the GCD property. Then let's prove the claim here. Uh, super hospital, yeah, definitely, yeah, super hospital. So any other questions? At least what I know is just G, uh, because supercuspidal representation, I mean the explicit construction are not known for general G. For some, probably for some groups it is known, but at least for GR it works well, yeah. Uh, the point here is that C pi is isomorphic to V check tensor V as a representation of G cross G. Therefore, uh, you only need a vector phi naught pi. 
you let the g cross g act on this vector, then it can generate the whole representation. Then the g cross g action here, it can be intertwined to the function here. So the function is still lies, still lies in the test function space. So you only need to consider this vector. Yeah, it's holomorphic, so there's, yeah. Actually, for classical group, I think the statement there is not true. Yeah, it's not true, yeah. Because you can get some non-trivial L factor for, uh, for superclassical representation, so it cannot be true, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's show the claim here. Mm. Uh, let me briefly give you the sketch. Let's just write down everything by definition. So, So by definition, this is the following zeta integral when never the real part is sufficiently large. So it's fg and the e pi uh, check convolute with phi naught pi e pi check g determinant g of s plus or minus one over two dg. Okay. Then let's write down the definition for the convolution. So we know that um, e pi check convolute with phi naught, uh, phi pi naught, uh, convolute with e pi check g is equal to the convolution of two copies of g. And here's e pi check a, and here's phi naught pi b, and here's e pi check b inverse a inverse g. DADB. In particular, if you apply the whole expression to the zeta integral here, then you get three copies of G here. Mm. And here you have FG, and here's E pi check A. Phi naught pi b and the e pi check b inverse a inverse g and determinant of g s plus and minus one over two da db dg. Then, as we can imagine, that we are going to do some change of variable. Um, let's first uh, write the integral as just e pi, not e pi check. So it's e pi of a inverse and the phi naught pi b, and e pi of g inverse a b, and here's determinant g of s plus and minus one over two d a d b d g. Okay. Uh, here we notice the support of the matrix coefficients. Oh uh, no, the support of the idempotence here, as we just mentioned, lies in k naught. So in, in particular, if you apply the Evaluation to the determinant of the support, then it's always one. Then let's try to do the change of variable here. Okay. In particular, we find that determinant of A is equal to determinant of G inverse AB is always equal to one by the support of the idempotent. Therefore, determinant of G is equal to determinant of G A inverse G inverse AB, which is determinant of B. So in particular, we can change the determinant G there to determinant B. So the zeta integral becomes three copies of G, and here's FG. E pi 
A inverse and the final pi B and the E pi of G inverse AB. And here's determinant of B, S plus and minus one over two. Then uh, you just glue the things together. You just find that uh, the following integral, two copies of G of FG, E pi G inverse AB, E pi A inverse of DA, dg is just e pi convoluted with f convoluted with e pi. Evaluate at b. Uh, therefore, you just prove the claim. You just run some um, calculations. You, run, you just follow the definition and the run calculations. And you, you use a condition for the support of e pi rise in k0. And you use the following relation for the, for the determinant. Then, then you immediately get claim here. Okay. Then in particular, we find that if we want to run the zeta integral for the whole uh, space of test functions, actually it's not necessary. You only need the uh, CC infinity functions on G. So in particular, I said i pi is equal to z of s f phi. Here f belongs to c c infinity of g, and phi belongs to the matrix coach. Then, in other words, the zeta integral here is always holomorphic. Uh, z s f phi is holomorphic. Oh. Holomorphic in S. So in particular, you just deduce that there are no poles, so Ls pi is equal to one. Okay. So this is the GCD property. Finally, let's see the functional equation. Uh, to prove the functional equation, we want to prove certain multiplicity one theorem for linear functionals. So. Um, we consider the action of G cross G on CC infinity MN by left and right translation. So GH act on FX is equal to F of G inverse XH. We consider the following action. Then this is a smooth representation for G cross G. Moreover, if you apply the, uh, if you apply the Fourier transform to GH act on F, then you can immediately show that it's determinant of GH inverse absolute value to the nth power of HG F on F. Then take the Fourier transform for F. This is just a, you just run the definition. Okay. Okay, then let's see, let's see the linear functional here. So, um, we consider the zeta integral associated to the following function. So, we let the test function to be the left g and right h translation of f. And also, we let the matrix coefficient to be gh act on phi as well. And here's s. Then let's write down the definition for this zeta integral. So it's g of f, g inverse xh. Here's phi of g inverse xh. And determinant x of s plus and minus one over two, dx. If you do some change of variable, you can immediately find that it's equal to determinant of gh inverse of s plus and minus one over two of the original zeta integral. Okay, therefore we find that if we define new a new action of G cross G, we define the following action of 
d cross g on the space of rational functions in q to d minus s by the following formula, g h act on some rational function t is equal to determinant of g h inverse of s plus n minus one over two t. Then we find that uh, the zeta integral can be viewed as an operator of the following form. Uh, z of s, and here is some, some vector and some vector. This operator lies in the following home space. Okay, it lies in the following home space. Uh, let me erase this part. Then in order to prove the functional equation, we first want to show that the left-hand side of the functional equation it also belongs to this home space. And further, we want to show the dimension of such, uh, such kind of linear functionals is always of dimension one. Therefore, we have the functional equation. Okay. Then let's first see the left-hand side of the, uh, of the zero integral. So z of one minus s, and here you take some function, then you take the, uh, you take the Fourier transform. And here, um, let me see. Um, and here you take some matrix coefficient for pi, then you take the counter gradient. We want to show that this operator also lies in the home space here. So first, let's 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 show this fact. Let's see home space. Again, this follows from explicit calculation. Um, let's see. We pick up some test function f and uh, run the procedure. Uh, GHF, we take this Fourier transform, and uh, mm, have GH applied to phi and take the quantum gradient. Then um, you write you write down the definition. So this is the integral of determinant g h inverse to the nth power of h g, the Fourier transform of f if you at the x as we just have seen. And here is h g of phi. Then you take the check of x. And here is determinant of x one minus s plus n minus one over two dx. Anyway, you just write down the definition. Then uh, you do some explicit calculation. You can find that this is determinant g h inverse to the nth power times determinant h g inverse uh, to the power one minus s plus n minus one over two uh, of the zeta integral z one minus s f hat and phi check and. Uh, for the term here, this is exactly the term appearing in the original zeta integral. Determinant g h inverse to the power s plus n minus one over two. Okay. So in other words, you find that this, this linear functional also lies in this home space. So in order to show the functional equation, we only need to show the space of such uh, linear functionals is of dimension one. So only to show the dimension over the field of 
rational functions in parameter q to the s of the home space g cross g run cc infinity of mn cross c pi to c to the qd minus s. It's lower than or equal to one, okay. So any questions so far? Okay, then let's see the proof of this inequality. Um, first, by the g cross g equivalent property, uh, for any linear function, we pick up linear function L lies in its home space. <laughs> um, again, by the g cross g equivalent property, we know that L is exactly determined by its value on CC infinity, Mn tensor with the matrix coefficient that we specified before. Then, let's see. Again, we know that L, if you evaluate it on, on, this, on this space, then since the matrix coefficient is fixed by the convolution by the idempotent, so it's L of CC infinity of Mn tensor with E pi check. Then again, you can write down the explicit integral formulas for the convolution here, and you can move the idempotent term here to the, to the term on the, on the test functions. Anyway, so it can be written as L evaluated at E pi convolute with CC infinity of Mn convolute with E pi. Okay, then in particular, we realize that any linear functionals in the home space is exactly determined by its restriction to uh, CC infinity functions on G. And uh, the final pi. In other words, we only need to show the following home space is of multiplicity one property. Okay, then let's run, let's run the algebraic procedure to prove this inequality. Okay. Okay. Uh, so first, uh, we know the following home space by resigning linear algebra, you know that this home space has a canonical isomorphism to home of g cross g of c pi to uh, the linear dual of the system infinity functions on G as a representation of G cross G. In particular, you, since you know that the C pi here is isomorphic to V check tensor V, in particular, it is a smooth representation. So, so the image always lies in the space of smooth vectors. So in particular, this is equal to home of G cross G from uh, C pi to the smooth country gradient of CC infinity. Okay. Now 
now, let's give explicit description for, for the system infinity function space here. We let H to be the diagonal subgroup, diagonal G, sub, uh, diagonal G in G cross G. Then the CC infinity functions on G can be realized as a compact supported induction from H to G cross G of the triple, trivial representation. Then if you apply the smooth contragradient of this space, you know that it's isomorphic to the full induce here. Therefore, the home space here is isomorphic to home of G cross G of C pi. And uh, here is the full induce. On the other hand, since uh, H is a diagonal subgroup of G, we know that H acts on C to the Q to the minus S trivially. Because let's briefly recall that G cross G act on uh, act on any rational function is equal to determinant of G H inverse to some power. Therefore, in particular, uh, H acts on the on this space trivially. So, in particular, we find that the uh, the space has a natural embedding into the following induced space. Okay, again, H act on the field of lower import, uh, field of rational functions trivially. Therefore, the home space has a natural embedding into the following home space. Okay. So any questions so far? Then for this home space, we can apply the Frobenius, well-known Frobenius reciprocity. So by the Frobenius reciprocity. You have the adjunction between the restriction and the in, induced functors. So. Okay, so in particular, this is isomorphic to home of H acton C pi uh, of uh, C to the Q to the minus S. Then I guess this H acton C to the Q to the minus S trivially is isomorphic to home G uh, acton V check tensor V and the tensor is C to the Q to the minus S. Then for this home space, you know that this is just an endomorphism ring of V. Since we pick up V to be irreducible, then it's of dimension one. So in particular, the whole space is isomorphic to C to the Q to the minus S. So, so the result falls. So the dimension is lower than equal to one. Therefore, in particular, we, indeed we have the functional equation. So any questions? Okay, if no question, let's see another example. Um, let's talk about a spherical case. Another example is a spherical case. We pick up pi to be a, uh, to be a spherical representation of G. As mentioned in last talk, we know that uh, pi here has a fixed factor by k anyway. Here k is, is the maximum open compact. Okay. Mm. 
Then, let me briefly remind you that for any spherical representation, we have the zonal spherical function associated to, associated to this representation. With the following properties. So, the first property is that pi g act on v is equal to gamma g act on v. Here v is any fixed vector, k fixed vector. The second property is that if you take the integration on k of the function gamma hkg dk, then it's equal to gamma h gamma g. And third property is that the, the, the zonal spherical function for the smooth contour gradient is just is inverse. So the zonal spherical function for pi tuta is gamma g inverse. Uh, in other words, is gamma pi tuta of g is equal to gamma pi g inverse. Yeah, anyway. Okay. And we have the following explicit expression for the zonal spherical function by the, by the theorem proved by Borel, Masmoto, and uh, Kessler. So let B be the standard Borel in G. Then we know that B quotient U is the split, maximum split torus, which has an expression that is n copies of f cross. Then we fix the n unramified characters, chi i unramified characters, of, of, of each copy f cross. Then we can form the form an unramified character chi for t. Then we can form the full induced space, induced B, G, chi. Then the following theorem is proved by Borel, Masmoto, and uh, Kessman. So, theorem. The full induced space here contains a unique vector which we denoted by phi such that phi of bk is equal to delta b one half times chi b. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, they proved the theorem individually, I see. Okay. Uh, also, if you take the smooth contour gradient of this representation, then you get the full induced from chi inverse. Then again, you can pick up another vector of the following form, which we denoted by phi tuta. So phi tuta lies in the GB chi tuta. Then the sonar spherical function attached to the unmodified representation is of the following form. So gamma chi g is equal to uh, k of phi g k phi tuta k b k which is just an integration of the function phi gk dk. Okay. In particular, we find that this is a matrix coefficient. Uh, this is a matrix coefficient. Then let's run the zeta integral associated to the zonal spherical function. In this case, as we have just seen before, it reduced to the GL1 case, which follows from the work of Tate and Iwasawa. So, serum. Uh, 
the vector phi here generates an armor phi representation, which we denote by pi naught. So phi generates pi naught, which is a spherical representation. Then we will show that L function, Ls pi, pi naught is equal to the product of n copies, i from one to n of Ls chi i. And the epsilon constant in this case is equal to one. Okay. Okay. Since time is not enough, let me give you a brief sketch here. So let's run a zeta integral procedure for the zuna spherical function, pi chi. And since we know the zuna spherical function, pi chi here, or uh, gamma chi here, is by k invariant. So since gamma chi is by k invariant, we can assume that our, our function here is, so can assume, can assume, then our function f lies in the k cross k invariant subspace of original test function space. Then, uh, then let's just run the definition. The zeta integral here can be written as g cross k of fg by kg of determinant g to the s plus n minus one over two e g dk. Okay, then uh, if, we, if we use the Iwasawa decomposition, we write G as BK. Here B belongs to a standard barrel and the K belongs to the maximum open compact. Then the zeta integral here can be written as K cross B of phi uh, F of BK, phi BK. Determinant B to the S plus N minus one over two dB. Then in particular, we find that it's equal to integral on B of FB, delta B one half, chi B, determinant B to the S plus N minus one over two dB. Then, again, we use the property explicit expression of the hard measure for the Borel subgroup, and explicit expression, let me write it here. How many times do I have? Uh, since I do not have enough time, then I would like to tell you exactly that uh, the answer here is the zeta integral, finite linear combination. Of zeta integrals of the following form, Z, S, F, I, chi, I, product n copies, F, I belong to the system infinity function on F. In particular, it falls from the thesis. You know that uh, L factor is exactly given by the product of n abelian gamma, uh, L factors. And uh, on the other hand, if you apply in the special function, the function f to be the characteristic function of the integer points of OF, then by explicit calculation, you find that Fourier transform is equal to itself. Therefore, in particular, you find that Epsilon, uh, the epsilon constant in this case is, is equal to one. So. Yeah, uh, this, may look no, no, this may look easy, but it will be useful for our later explanation for the Bob McCarthy proposal. So any questions? Uh, say it again. Gamma chi, yeah. Uh, I think it's GK. It's GK. I think it's GK. Actually, it's a matrix coefficient pairing of vector phi tilde and phi. 
then I think it's oh oh yes you are right yeah yeah yeah, yeah thank you yeah so you are right yeah thank you so any other questions yeah if no question I think yeah it's fine.